First of all, have a look at this ECG strip. What do you see? Many of us have encountered this strip in intensive care many times. This rhythm is also known as terminal rhythm. Indeed, it is one of the deadliest rhythms and a medical emergency. So, let's look at what causes this rhythm, how to revert it, and, most importantly, how to prevent it from happening again. Ventricular fibrillation is a dangerous rhythm, as the term terminal refers to being on the verge of death. So what exactly is happening in the heart during this? To understand, we need to look into the heart of the patient. First of all, let's understand how our heart work. There are four chambers in the heart, which is a muscular system. The ventricles are the two bottom chambers. In a healthy heart, the blood flows uniformly in and out of these chambers. And that's how our body receives the blood. This rhythmic beating of the heart is controlled by the electrical system, also called the conducting system of the heart. Sometimes, under certain conditions, the heart starts beating irregularly, which is called an arrhythmia. Ventricular arrhythmias occur when the ventricles begin to beat irregularly as a result of a conduction error. There are three types of ventricular arrhythmias, preventricular contractions, ventricular tachycardia, and ventricular fibrillation. The most dangerous of these is ventricular fibrillation, which causes the heart to quiver or tremble, making the heart less effective at pumping blood throughout the body and leading to sudden cardiac arrest. So what are the causes of ventricular fibrillation? The cause of VFib isn't always known, but it can occur with certain medical conditions. VFib most commonly occurs during an acute heart attack or shortly thereafter. When heart muscle doesn't get enough blood flow, it can become electrically unstable and cause dangerous heart rhythms. A heart that has been damaged by a heart attack or other heart muscle damage is vulnerable to VFib. Other causes include heart failure, heart valve disease, a low potassium level or other electrolyte abnormalities, certain medicines, and certain genetic diseases that affect the heart's ion channels or electrical conduction. The most common risk factors include a weakened heart muscle or cardiomyopathy, an acute or prior heart attack, genetic diseases such as long or short QD syndrome, Brugada disease, or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, certain medicines that affect heart function, and lastly, electrolyte abnormalities. Let's have a look at the clinical presentation of VFib in the emergency room. It is frequently presented as a medical emergency and is treated on the spot by a medical professional. Some of the symptoms patients have include loss of consciousness, sudden fainting or transient dizziness, and dyspnea or acute shortness of breath. When a medical professional arrives at the scene, findings on physical examination may include no pulse or respiration, as well as wide and chaotic QRS complexes on cardiac monitors. Because VFib frequently results in unconsciousness, it is commonly detected after a serious emergency. Your healthcare provider, typically emergency services, will look at the following when diagnosing VFib. Your vital signs, such as your heart rate and blood pressure. Analysis of the heart's rhythm using devices such as an electrocardiogram, cardiac telemetry, or an AED. Your overall health and medical history, and a description of your symptoms given by you, a family member, or a bystander. Now, let's have a look at ECG features of VFib. First, there is chaotic irregular deflections of varying amplitude. No identifiable P waves, QRS complexes, or T waves. Rate is between 150 to 500 per minute, and lastly the amplitude decreases with duration. Treatment Ventricular fibrillation requires emergency medical treatment to prevent sudden cardiac death. The goal of emergency treatment is to restore blood flow as quickly as possible to prevent organ and brain damage. Now, there are two stages of treatment for VFib. The first tries to stop your VFib immediately to restore a blood pressure and pulse. The second stage focuses on reducing your chances of developing VFib in the future. First, cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR. Conventional CPR using chest compressions and mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing at a ratio of 30 to 2 compressions to breaths. In adult victims of cardiac arrest, it is reasonable for rescuers to perform chest compressions at a rate of 100 to 120 per minute, and to a depth of at least 2 inches or 5 centimeters for an average adult, 
while avoiding excessive chest compression depths that are greater than 2.4 inches or 6 centimeters. Next, defibrillation. This treatment is also called cardioversion. An automated external defibrillator or AED delivers shocks through the chest wall to the heart. It can help restore a regular heart rhythm. As soon as an AED is available, apply it and follow the prompts. If you're not trained to use an AED, a 911 operator or another emergency medical operator may be able to give you instructions. Public use AEDs are programmed to recognize ventricular fibrillation and send a shock only when needed. Other treatments for ventricular fibrillation are given to prevent future episodes and reduce the risk of arrhythmia-related symptoms. Treatment for ventricular fibrillation includes medications, medical devices, and surgery. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support us to learn more. Thank you.